Hello and welcome to the latest episode of How to Draw Awesome Animals with Your Friends at Peppermint Narwhal. This is the video series where we teach how to draw animals in a fun and simple way while we share facts about the species as we go along. So today we're going to be drawing the fascinating Gila Monster. And the Gila Monster is of course its common name and you can see there we've listed it. And below that you'll see it has a scientific name which is written there in parentheses. And then below that you'll see that we have its conservation status and unfortunately this animal is near threatened uh, with extinction so we've got a little bit of work to do to better protect this animal. We'll talk a little bit more about it as we go ahead and get started on our drawing. Get this out of the way and again pencil and paper is how I like to draw so that's how I'm going to get started today. Now this guy's going to be not very tall on the paper but it's pretty long. So we're going to start on the middle of uh, the sort of left side of our paper here. So there we go. We'll go ahead and give us plenty of room for the drawing. So I'm just going to draw two dots. And much like a traditional dot to dot, if you're new to this channel, I'm going to teach you a simple drawing method to draw these in sort of simple, fun ways, as we say, uh, using this dot to dot technique that we've all done. So dot two dots is obviously a straight line, very simple. Now I like to uh, add in just a third dot occasionally, or do a three dot technique, and I'll do that for a curve. So uh, I'll talk about that here right out of the gate. We'll do a dot here and a dot here. So there's two dots there, and we're just gonna have a subtle curve here. There we go. And that middle dot kind of uses it as the arch of the curve there. So that's helpful. All right, so from this dot, bottom dot here, we'll put a dot here. Right about there, looks good. I'll just draw another kind of straight line there. That looks nice. And then from this dot here, we're going to sort of bring up a dot here and a dot there. So there we go, we've got three dots and a nice curving line. You can go either direction with your dots. And now I'm just gonna sort of, we're making a mouth here, so I'm just gonna put a little nice dimple smile here. Got another happy animal here. And that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to come back to this front area. This is essentially gonna be the snout. And I'm gonna put two little small ovals indicating nostrils of my Gila monster. So there we go, that looks fine. And then I'm gonna put, uh, I'm gonna come back to this top part here. I'm gonna put a dot right about here, just a little bit below that other one. And I'm gonna put a dot right about here and a dot right about there. So there's three dots, I'm gonna get a nice rounded shape here for the rest of the head there. That looks pretty good. And now I'm going to, I'm going to put a dot uh, for the eye here and I'm gonna put that eye right about here. There we go. And I'm gonna color in most of it, but leave a little bit of that white to capture that sort of highlight of the eye there. So that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to come back to this uh, mouth here, but I'm gonna sort of draw a tongue. Um, a lot of times you'll see these uh, Gila monsters will have their tongues sort of sticking out. It's kind of a very lizard-like or snake-like sort of trait. We'll talk about that in a minute, but let's start to draw that. So I've got three dots now. There you go, and I'm gonna kind of connect those using a nice curved line there. That looks pretty good. Now, of course, uh, they have sort of a forked tongue here, so to do that, I'm just going to sort of uh, make a little bit of a, I'm gonna kind of curve it a little bit, then bring it back in, and then curve it again. And there we go, curve it up. That gives us that nice sort of forked tongue. And then now I'm just gonna sort of make like a, curving line to bring it back, just a little bit below that dot there. There we go. And now I'm going to sort of continue this with a dot here and a dot here, just sort of bring this curving up. And we'll just meet it right into that happy sort of smile there. And now I'm going to sort of just color in some of this, not all of it, just a little bit, to kind of indicate that tongue is sticking out there. And then I'm gonna make that sort of center part of the tongue by making a curved line that just sort of sticks out just like that. So there we go, we've got a nice little tongue sticking out of our Gila monster there. All right, so now on the bottom side, we'll start to put the chin on here. So right at the bottom of the tongue here, or towards the bottom of the tongue, we'll put a dot there. And then we'll just put another dot here and we'll do kind of a nice sort of straight line off of there. That looks pretty good. And then from this dot here, we'll put a dot here 
and a dot here, and it'll make a nice curved line. So there we go. So there we go. We got a head of our Gila monster starting to come together. Um, this animal is, of course, a, you know, a lizard, and it spends most of its time. Uh, it's in the, actually the largest lizard in the United States, and it's a desert animal. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But let's get the back started here. So as we've got the head here, we'll go ahead and put a dot right above that last dot that we did. And then we're going to kind of make a big chunky body. They have sort of a, uh, a fairly chubby body, you might say. There we go, big long back there. And bring that back. So sometimes I like to go both directions and start off light and darken it as I go and I make a more longer gesture. All right, that looks fine. So let's come back to the underside here now. So let's put a dot here and a dot here and a dot here. And I'll just make a nice subtle curved line there. There we go, that looks good. Okay, so we're going to start to put on one of the uh, front legs here. And to do that, first I'm going to put a dot here, a dot here, and a dot here. And I'm going to kind of get that shoulder, that you can see there. And then from there, I'm going to sort of dip down slightly. So I got three dots here, I just kind of dip it down. And then we're going to kind of come back out for that part of the body there, the top part of that front leg. And then from here, we're going to put a dot here and a dot here. And we'll just kind of bring those together there. And then from that dot there, we'll just draw a nice straight line and bring it down. So they've got kind of stout little legs here. So now we'll kind of come back to the underside of this leg here and it'll be a little easier. We'll do a dot right about there and a dot right about there and just kind of do a nice sort of straight line there. there, And then from there, we'll sort of put a dot down here and just draw a straight line down there. There we go. I'm just gonna put a little bit of curving overlap here and just kind of show the crease of that. There we go. And now we're gonna to start to put on the, uh, the front foot. So I'll go ahead and put a dot here and a dot here. I'm gonna use this end dot and make a nice curving line there. So again, uh, we said that this is a, a desert animal. You'd certainly find it, uh, you know, spending a lot of the time uh, out in the sun, uh, but sometimes that sun can be pretty, pretty harsh. So this animal is a great burrowing animal, and we'll talk a little bit about that. But let's finish this foot. So I'll put a dot down here and just make a nice straight line. And then I'm gonna put a dot here, make another straight line. And I think I'm having some pencil trouble here, so I'm gonna change my pencil here. Give me a second. Sorry about that. Looks like the tip was about to break off there. Okay, so coming back to where we left off, we we're drawing this line here, put a line there, there's another. We're gonna start with some of these toes here. So I'm gonna put a oops, dot there and draw that back to there. Another sort of little line there, draw that. And then I'm gonna put a sort of line out here, for another dot out here for another straight line. Put another one down there. Put another one here. They got sort of these very reptilian sort of legs here or toes. So we'll go ahead and put another one here, draw a straight line. Put another one there, draw a straight line. Another one there, work our way. And then we'll finally finish off with a smaller one here. There we go. And then I'll just connect that just like that. So there we go, we got one of the paws on there. And again, you can kind of uh, put some claws on this guy if you'd like, just sort of easily rounding off some of those tips there. So that looks good. Now I'll come back to the belly side of this animal here. We'll put a dot right about here. Put a dot here and a dot here. Make a nice curving line for the bottom of this uh, eel monster. And then we'll start this back leg here. We'll put a dot over here. We we'll use this dot that we had left off with. And put a dot there so there's a nice curving line there there we go and then from this dot here we're going to put a dot here and just kind of draw a straight line coming down and now we'll come back up to this back side here and we'll put a dot here a dot here and a dot here and draw a nice curving line there and then we're going to actually kind of come back a little bit further out here we'll put a dot there a dot there and a dot there. We'll just kind of round that 
out nicely for the back side. And then we're going to put the foot back foot on here. So I'll put a dot here and a dot here. I'll just kind of round that off nicely. And then again, we've got some of those sort of uh, clawed feet to do. So we'll sort of put a dot here and draw a straight line, draw that out. And then maybe put one of the toes. Just, oops, actually I got three dots there, but I'm not gonna do a curved line. I'm gonna do first straight line to that one. I didn't mean to do that, I got ahead of myself. And then there we go. The dot, the dot technique is actually sometimes a little tricky for me because I actually draw a little faster than this, so, but I try to simplify the drawing for using this technique. So sometimes I, my brain just wants to go ahead and keep going where I know I wanna go. Okay, so now we've got this uh, digit here. We'll put another dot down here and draw a straight line. And then dot there, we're just kind of making these sort of very reptilian sort of toes. Okay. Just simple two dots connecting. And then for this next one, we'll just go a little bit over here, put a dot there, put a dot there, put a dot there, and then bring it back. And then maybe you'll see one of these claws will kind of show is happening a little bit on this sort of out of the a little bit overlapped there we go so we got some nice more toes there all right that looks pretty good we'll go ahead and now put on the tail they have a sort of stout tail um not as big as a lot of other lizards so i'll put a dot here a dot here and a dot there and then we'll just sort of bring this back in a nice curve there. Got another sort of short but chunky tail. So there we go, got three dots there. I'll just kind of round out the tip. And then from the back side here, we're going to sort of put a dot here, a dot here, and we'll use that end dot and just sort of work our way back to that. There we go, that looks pretty good. All right, so there we go, we've got uh, the uh, Gila monster starting to come together here. We'll go ahead and put on some other legs here. Now these legs we're gonna draw, we're not gonna mirror them exactly because uh, they're gonna be a little, you would see a lot of what's happening up here wouldn't be uh, visible. So I'm just gonna put a dot here and a dot here and I'm gonna bring that down just like that. I'll put a dot here, make another straight line. And then I'm gonna make a dot down there and draw another straight line like that. Now for the claws here, I'm just going to sort of, or the toes, I'm just going to sort of make, I'm going to do this a little faster, but I'm going to make these sort of almost like curving sort of hooking shapes. So, and just get some of those toes, almost like V's with nice curves to our like drawing sharp uh, dorsal fins. So there we go. And then just three of them will be fine. I'll put a dot here and a dot here, kind of bring me back to there and then a dot up to here and again that looks pretty good it's just another backside leg there all right so this is looking pretty good uh we'll go ahead and put uh, another foot uh, on this guy here uh this time we'll put this other foot maybe right about here so we'll put a dot there and a dot there again bring that down and then from this right about there a little bit above that other dot we'll put a dot there draw another straight line and then we'll put a dot maybe right about here draw another straight line there so there we go and then I'm going to kind of do the same thing I did before I'm going to make three sort of curving toes sort of here so we've got one two three finish up there that looks good and I'll put a dot at the end there another dot over here just kind of bring that together and then I'll put a basically a dot up here and just sort of bring that leg to the other side so there we go so again, this is uh, the nice start of the body tape. Now we've got to sort of start putting on some of uh, the distinctive markings that we really know uh, this Gila monster for. So um, like I said, this monster, this monster, the Gila monster spends a lot of its time uh, in burrows during the hot desert sun. Uh, so we'll talk about that here. And I'm gonna put a markings on the face here. So I'm essentially gonna basically draw a, a straight line sort of right above the nostrils, kind of come close to the eye. I'm gonna curve it around the eye there. There we go. And then I'm going to sort of drop it down below the cheek there, just sort of, just like that. And this would all be a little bit darker typically. Now their markings are all unique, so you can't really get this wrong, but typically you would see that they'd have a sort of darker face there. So the Gila monster became famous uh, 
uh, in older horror movies of the 40s, 50s, and 60s, they started to use these guys because they felt like they were living dinosaurs, so they would use them in uh, movies and films. They don't really do that anymore because they have much better special effects these days, uh, but that's sort of where they got a, a, a horror movies. If you like old black and white horror movies, you might see the Gila Monster show up um, in some of those older movies. One of the first uh, animal movie stars, I guess you'd say. Okay, so uh, I'm going to put some banding on this animal. Now, they have these sort of beaded scales that would be all over their body. We're not going to do that kind of detail. But uh, over the course of their body, they would be mostly orange and black uh, with these alternating bands of black and orange. So I'm going to start making these bands. And these are just sort of anamorphic shapes. You can kind of can't really get them wrong. But again, each animal is unique sort of body type and design. I'm just sort of making these curving sort of bands and uh, just sort of curve them around the body here. You can't, or like I said, get these wrong. And then inside of some of them, I'm gonna leave sort of some other shapes, circles there. And then I'll color in some of these uh, dark and leave these inner circles lighter. So there we go, got another kind of curving, blobbing shape here uh, following the body. And this time I'll put a couple of these in there, maybe one big one down there. Again, no real wrong way to do this. Um, and then, just continue this along the body here. Maybe put another couple there. And then on the tail, same sort of direction here. And then I'm gonna start darkening the tip of the tail there. I'm gonna start coloring some of these bands on the tail that I did. Just lightly hatch them in to indicate that this would be a little bit of the darker color. And then I'm actually gonna put a dot on these orange color areas, which would be you know bright orange just to kind of indicate that there's actually black markings in these areas too, and coloring in this guy. So I'm just doing a little bit of my own coloring work now that I kind of drew uh, around the body here, just like I did with the face, slightly coloring in those inner circles or those inner shapes I'm gonna leave uncolored because I want those to stand out as like the orange color that you would see in there. They have the sort of alternating patterns. So this looks pretty good. Now I said this guy was great at burrowing that also, uh, you know, it's how he's going to stay cool during the hot desert sun. You know, when it's at its warmest, he can kind of burrow in the ground. And, you know, once he's charged his battery uh, by getting a little bit of sun to get his body temperature going, uh, if it gets too much, he doesn't want that. So he's going to go into the burrows. But also being a burrowing animal, he's got a great opportunity to become how he's a predator. He's actually a predator. He's a carnivore. So he's going to eat uh, meat and hunt for other animals. But because he's a burrowing animal, he'll a lot of times go into burrows. And some actual birds uh, in the desert when there's not too many trees, of course, are gonna be ground burrowing animals. So he feeds on eggs and uh, young, sometimes he'll find a rodent uh, den and he'll eat the young inside of there. So he's not a fast predator, um, but he's got uh, a, a very good sense of getting underground and that's where he's gonna find a lot of his prey. So I'm gonna put some of these blobby shapes on the uh, legs now. So there we go, just sort of indicating that they would also have sort of some darker markings there. Okay, again, can't get this wrong now. Just one other thing to note about this animal is he's actually uh, a venomous lizard. Um, as a defensive mechanism, these animals are actually have a, a venomous uh, uh, sort of bite. So unlike a uh, snake, which would have sort of fangs that inject it, they have a, a duct inside of their mouth and it'll actually get inside of their saliva. So uh, you definitely don't want to get bit by one of these guys. Um, but they're fairly, you know, like I said, they're not aggressive animals. The, uh, most of the time you don't really encounter them and you leave them alone, much like any animal, they'll just sort of go about their business and uh, you're certainly not on their menu and uh, you're not of too much interest other than you're probably scary to an animal at first. So as long as you leave it alone, it'll relax and go about its day. Okay, so finishing up with some of these dots here. And there we go, we've got a nice looking Gila monster completed. Uh, this is a really cool lizard. Like I said, you can find it in the deserts of the American Southwest, a little bit of uh, tip of Northern Mexico, the Sonoran, Mojave, and Chihuahuan deserts. Uh, and again, it also has a, a close relative of the beaded lizard, which would be found more into Mexico and not in the United States. Uh, but it also sort of looks a little similar to that. So uh, oh, one last thing, this mon uh, Gila monster, as it's called, um, the Gila part of it comes from the Gila River Basin in Arizona. That's where it's got its name. And of course, unfortunately, monster just becomes from the fact that, yeah, I think we tend to sometimes anthropomorphize, uh, and that just basically is a fancy term for saying we put human 
perceptions onto animals. So sometimes animals that we think look a little scarier, you know, we give them names like monster or, you know, they, the snakes tend to have a more different eye than us. So they tend to look more sinister. But again, that's just something we're projecting onto the animal and not something the animal's projecting out to us. So it's really just a little bit of a misperception. So unfortunately it's got that name Gila monster, but it's actually a very calm, nice little lizard. It's not gonna give you any sort of threat. Uh, but it's certainly a pretty fun animal to draw, and we'd love to see how yours turned out. You can share that with us using the hashtag Minty Sketch, uh, post it online somewhere. Uh, and if you have a need for your parents to help you out with that, please do so. If you like this video, please give it a like. Uh, again, you can subscribe to the channel to be kept up to date for future videos. Otherwise, we look forward to seeing you back here on a future episode of How to Draw Awesome Animals with your friends at Peppermint Narwhal. Have a great day.